in this video we'll talk about chicken pox versus smallpox both are kind of pox but they differ quite a lot and the organism that cause these kind of pox are also different so let's begin chicken pox is caused by varicella zoster virus whereas smallpox is caused by variola virus both these viruses are quite different from each other and the type of rashes that appears in these pox is different. For example, the rashes overall look similar, but the stages of the rashes, like whether they are blisters, postules, or scabs, they are quite asynchronous in case of variola zoster virus infection. Whereas all the types of rashes on the body are in synchronous phase in case of pox or smallpox. And the scarring in case of chicken pox is basically minimal, whereas in smallpox there could be deep and permanent scarring and it's very common. Chicken pox has nothing to do with chicken. Somebody believes that chicken pox, the name was given like this because it has the blisters which appears on the skin has striking resemblance with chickpea. So it's like chickpea like blisters. That's why somebody might have named it chicken pox. And smallpox is not smaller than chickenpox, it's just a name. So first we'll talk about varicella zoster virus, which is a responsible organism for the chickenpox. Now it can lead to two distinct diseases. One is varicella, which is chickenpox, and another is uh, basically shingles. Shingles occur late in the lifespan. So it's kind of like a neurotropic herpes virus. So it, it is important to note that varicella zoster is a neurotropic herpes virus. Now shingles occur lately on the uh, individual's lifespan and it, it reappears from a dormant infection. It affects the dorsal root ganglion. So generally the infection spreads via respiratory droplet and it can spread via somebody touching the postules which has the fluid on that. Now primary infection is always via uh, nasopharynx and eventually it can populate the lungs. Then ultimately it can go to the skin and cause rashes. Question is how does it enter the skin? From the nasopharynx it goes to the nearby tonsils and through that it can affect the T-cells. Some of these affected T-cells go to the bloodstream and eventually carry the virus to the skin. Now, this infection always starts as an itchy blister-like rash that appears first on the chest and then in the face. Eventually, it spreads all around the extremities of the body. So there are different stages of these kind of rash. These are maculopapular rash. So initially, there are macules, which are small, flat, red spots. There are papules, which are raised and uh, raised bumps. Then there are vesicles, which are fluid-filled blister-like appearance. Then there are postules, which are vesicle-like, but they have cloudy uh, appearance and they are filled with pus. And ultimately, there are scabs, which are blisters that are dried out and, and there is a crust on the top. So these are the different stages that can appear on the body of a person who is infected with the varicella zoster virus. And many of these stages can be observed in the body simultaneously. That's a typical feature of chicken pox in contrast to the smallpox. So basically, let's see how these viruses can affect the skin. So here we are looking at the skin where dermis, epidermis, nerve ending and the blood vessels are labeled. So first the circulating T cells, which are now circulating in the blood, eventually moves near to the skin region, the epidermis region. And they sort of start infecting the skin, which forms these rashes. Initially, th those are maculopapular rashes. And la later on, these uh, maculopapular rashes become vesicles. And they are filled with fluid or even pus. So they, are, they have multinuclear zang cells, which are pretty common in these kind of infections. And sometimes, basically what happens is, using those uh, nerve tract, there is a retrograde transport. Anyway, what are the rashes, why the rashes in chickenpox are discontinuous? That's an important question.
Why not the rashes totally cover up the skin? Because obviously our skin is also having an interferon response which prevents the spread of the viruses in every cell type. Cytotoxic T cell can actually recognize class 1 MHC positive uh, viral peptides on the su surface of these skin cells. And it can secrete perforin and granzyme that can literally lead to the apoptosis of the cell. Anyway, these varicella zoster virus can affect the neurons. From the skin, there are specific nerve terminals which are ending into the skin can get affected by these viruses and it can move retrogradely to the cell body. Inside the cell body, it can stay dormant for years and later on, it, there could be a anterograde transport of that and it might lead to reappearance of these disease and that is in form of shingles. So overall, if we quickly summarize, there is primary infection that is very common in the children and it it's basically starts on the face and the chest and eventually spread all along the body. There are some complications which can occur like bacterial sepsis, pneumonia, encephalitis, but it's not common in every patient. Then eventually there could be a dormant uh, infection of these viruses in the dorsal root ganglion. They can stay there for ages and later on it can reappear uh, from that latent state uh, when the immune system becomes weaker. And that happens, that, that leads to reactivation of the particular uh, viruses and this, this lead to shingles. Mostly these are localized rash often present in one part of the body depends on which dorsal root ganglion is affected. Sometimes it is also associated with complications like myelitis, cranial nerve palsies, uh, vaculopathies, pancreatitis, hepatitis but not common in every patient. So overall what we understood from the uh, description that there are two important take home messages chickenpox starts with the in with an incubation period then there is a prodromal phase and then eventually there is a itchy rash shingles reactive shingles occurs due to reactivation of these latent viruses and eventually they, those are more localized uh, they can uh, basically they can be they can lead to pain tingling and followed by blistery rashes so this is overall timeline. So the primary vi viremia has uh, basically the incubation period. Then it eventually affects the liver and the spleen. Then there is a contagious period where there is fever and rash, all these uh, physical appear, all these kind of like symptoms are more apparent. And there, there, then there is a viral latency period when some of these virus can actually stay dormant in the dorsal root ganglion. Now basically here we can see in terms of diagnosis, the chicken pox, the blisters, these are kind of like uh, clinically determinable. Shingles are also uh, understandable from a clinical perspective because it would be localized and only one side in the body. Uh, from these blisters, one can point out the Zang cells, which are multinucleated cells actually. PCR based diagnosis is best for any viral infection, including varicella zoster virus. Direct uh, uh, fluorescent antibodies can also be used for a test but not prescribed that much. Anyway, overall we understand the symptoms include pain, itching, tingling in the locus, localized area in case of sing shingles. Rash examination is really important if the rash has different different kinds, for example macules, papules, scabs, postules, all of them are present, it most likely be chickenpox. If it is only one category like either vesicle or all of them are postules, then most likely it's basically smallpox. Anyway, uh, there are specific antiviral medications which can uh, literally help to sort of like prevent the infection spread or it interfere with the viral life cycle. Oral acyclovir reduces the time course of acute pain. Um, anyway, there are other specific uh, uh, treatments such as famicyclovir and valacyclovir, which are base analogs similar to acyclovir, and they work nicely against the varicella zoster virus. Now let's move on to smallpox, which is caused by the variola virus and this belongs to orthopox virus family or variola uh, i mean this has uh, different features these are pretty big viruses actually they are double stranded dna virus unlike the varicella virus varicella virus was actually a rna virus but this is a dna virus 
they are shaped like a brick or ovoid their size is large and approximately 200 to 300 nanometer in diameter so these are pretty big compared to any other viruses several times bigger than the varicella zoster virus replication occurs in the cytoplasm not of the host cell not in the nucleus so that is typical to smallpox incubation period is somehow around 7 to uh, 17 days let us quickly look at the viral structure here is the outer membrane here is the inner membrane core wall this is the core this is the double stranded dna genome and this is the viral enzymes that are required for replication smallpox is also a cousin to variola or monkey pass, uh, or monkeypox viruses but anyway this is the replication cycle so the virus ejects injects its core inside the cell and the core has the genomic material along with enzymes so initially immediate early mrna is produced that produce that makes immediate early proteins sequentially intermediate mrna gives rise to intermediate proteins and late stage mrna give rise to late proteins meanwhile the genome also gets replicated and eventually viral packaging is done the spread of these virus happens via respiratory droplets also sometimes via nasal secretion respiratory a cough etc fluid from the pustule can literally uh, basically allow the spread sometimes it can also enter via injury site provided that the person is touching some sort of like scab or this kind of fluid this is uh, more common in case of healthcare givers so pox virus theoretically can cross the placenta and infect the fetus but the incidence is pretty com rare so in babies it is pretty common generally there is a program phase of two to four days where fever malaise headache vomiting etc is pretty common then there is exanthem which begins as a macule uh, macules red dots in the faces and generally all the extremities like in the hands and the legs so there are different kind of rashes just like in the uh, chicken pox like macules like papules vesicles postules and scabs but the important part is only one category of rash would be found all over the body at a given time point so complications include secondary infection like bacterial infection in the skin keratitis and blindness hemorrhagic smallpox is rare but may be associated with bleeding encephalitis is extremely rare but can also happen but it's not true for every patient the diagnosis can nicely be done with the clinical history and the laboratory test info involves pcr or rt pcr rt pcr is the best test for diagnosing any virus virus infection so differential diagnosis compared to varicella is like lesions are at different stages in case of varicella but lesions are all synchronized in case of variola treatment option includes basically a lot of hydration um, generally the incidence of smallpox has been dramatically decreased due to the smallpox vaccine post exposure prophylaxis is also possible vaccination within the four days of exposure is pretty common uh, if somehow is in somebody is infected it they have to be um, basically isolated to prevent the spread of the uh, disease it's kind of like a disease management but world health organization in 1970s has already announced that this is a dead disease and basically it is eradicated but few instances here and there are also visible most of the cases of poxes these days are actually chicken pox and smallpox are extremely rare so i hope this comparison and this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in the next video you can support our channel using super thanks option your small contribution is our motivation and stay tuned